Um, but there were very few people who were doing specifically what I was doing. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about is finding what it is that you do that separates you from everybody else. Now I've been able to do a whole lot of things which we'll talk about during the presentation that have come out of my blog. I'm also a mom, so I have four kids. My oldest is 22. I have an 18-year-old, a 12-year-old, and an 8-year-old son. Wow. Congrats. So I'm Kathy from craftychica.com, and I have just always been resourceful to make money to make a living doing art. Back when I first started, my husband and I got married, we used to cut up cardboard boxes and make magnets and sell them to boutique store owners and pay rent, and pay our life bill. And so can you imagine when the internet, the whole website, everything blog happened, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have fun with this. <laughs> and I just love sharing ideas, I love making things, I love sharing positivity. And around when I started my blog, it was 2003, Martha had her game really strong at the time. I had a national craft column, and I could not do Martha's style for anything. <laughs> Even though I knew there was a market out there for it, no matter how hard I tried, I didn't want to go through that minimalist path. I was more of like a maximal yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. But you know what? Like Mimi said, I owned it. And I thought, you know what? There is a market for people who like the things that I do. And I managed to turn that into a line of published books and workshops and speaking and my website and even a craft cruise, which we'll get into later. But um, yeah, so that's our history of how we got here. So the first and foremost thing is personality has to be a must. Because the thing is, when you look at both of our brands, our faces are front and center. And that shows that we are a person behind the brand. And I've always looked at like Tyra and Jenny Lo and Oprah, like when you see their brand and what they do, it's their face matched with it. And I, I do believe that is a strong sense of, of success because people feel like they connect with you. Yes. And through showing that, you want to have a signature style. What are you known for? Like Mimi, she is known for her gorgeous pictures that she shows in the vertical style. And they're always different, you know, the things that you make. And also, when it comes to that, it's utilizing a lot of video and live streaming to show your personality. Get yourself out there. And for anyone that wants to take their business to the next level, I don't want to hear you complaining like, oh, I can't do video, or oh, I'm scared of the camera. It's like, no, there's no time for that. Like, if you're really serious. For that. Yes. Uh, develop, you know, one of the things about developing your signature style is that you know, like I said, a lot of what I learned that first year was accidental. Um, but when you, when you start to realize what it is that attracts people to you, that's where you need to put your focus in. So I wanted to do a whole lot of things with my, with my blog, but I knew that the major interest for people was my DIY. So I'm known for doing video tutorials. I teach people how to sew in a very easy to learn way. I literally take you step by step by step, so at the end you end up with something finished that you're excited about. I would have never done video because people, if you ask my friends, they'll tell you I'm very shy. I rarely would ever talk to anybody. But having to do video to grow my business was very hard for me because when I first started, I would turn the camera on and I was like, hello, my name is Mimi G. <laughs> and I was like, this is not going to work. But now you turn on the camera and I'm like, hola! <laughs> you know, like, just like, <laughs> You kind of like learn it, but you have to be able to do it. So if it's not something that you're currently doing, you absolutely need to start doing it. And if you're uncomfortable with it, just keep practicing, get in front of the mirror, get in front of the camera, and do it over and over again until you start getting comfortable. And if you have somebody in your life who does video who can help you, kind of coach you along, ask for help. <laughs> and in proof of Mimi's story, like the way that I found her, I was looking online for how to make a duct tape dress form. And I found this kind of grainy video, and it was Mimi and her husband was wrapping her in duct tape. And, and then every time he put the tape around her booty, he'd like.
likes. <laughs> could come to Crafty Chica and say, hey, that, this is a product line. So again, utilizing all of these things, being relevant in different categories, getting yourself out there, having your signature style, and showing your likeness. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> promo for your audience, fear of missing out. So this picture was from ceramics, that was cake pops. Someone caught me at the, the last day of the craft convention and made a meme, put it out on the internet. And so when you look up crafty, like three page in, there's this crazy thing that says, all that blue eventually does go to your brain. <laughs> and then there's like the pretty way go. But, but the point is, is that you have to develop content where people never know what's gonna come next. Like, yes, they have your category, but you have to always, you know, present something that's exciting where they go, oh my God, I haven't seen BBG's site this week. What am I missing? What am I missing? So you wanna keep them engaged, you wanna keep them amused, you wanna keep them inspired. And we were just talking about the different social media platforms. Don't do a one size fits all where you put out one piece of content and share the same link on all of them. That is boring. Like each one of those platforms is an opportunity with a different set of people for you to connect with. Go to that party. I, I look at each of them like a party that I'm going to. What is the vibe of that party? Is it a steak and lobster party? Or is it like, you know, a Kool-Aid fun party? You know, you have to fit what that party is and bring your content. They're all, and you also have to know that not all social media platforms might work for you. I use Twitter to promote my blog post throughout the day. But I'm not really into Twitter per se because everything that I do is image driven, right? So Twitter doesn't really work for me that way. So I use it for marketing purposes. My Facebook audience, you know, uh, is not as close to me as my Instagram family because my Instagram family follows me on a closer level. They see kind of like what I look like without makeup on and when I'm, you know, chilling in the couch and out with my kids. That's, that's the idea that I want to give my Instagram followers, take a closer look at my life. Facebook, you use it, you promote, you share, you you know um, 
post your ads or graphics or whatever it is that you're doing, but each of those different platforms have different reasons of, for you to use them. And so you have to be able to share different content across the board. And as YouTube too, because YouTube is really where people connect you video. Like we said, Instagram video is very short. They're funny, you can do that. But YouTube, if you are you know, a blogger and wanna be a blogger, is a completely different social media platform than you know, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And just with the, the different platforms, it has opened up a world of opportunity for monetizing. Because I, like I said, I'm the type of person, I love social networking, I love all the platforms, and I don't like thinking like, oh, this is my target market, this age to this age. No, creativity is universal and ageless. And like Vine was a really hard one. Like I loved Vine, and I tried like the first six months on there, and they were like, your voice sounds like Fanny White. <laughs> So my hands as little as possible, and boom! Now I'm at almost 43,000 followers oh, on Vine, and it's a younger market. And they're so cute; they like write to me and they <laughs> support me. And if there's like a bully on there who says something about my hands, there's another girl who says, "Leave Cracky Chico." <laughs> I have Cracky Chica kids and I have